Welcome to another edition of Around the Valley with Dave and Stephanie here on WGRC. And we are excited that on this episode, Stephanie, we get to highlight a great organization in the area, the YWCA of North Central PA. Yeah, we're excited to be heading up to the Williamsport area where the YWCA is and learn about all the items that they do to help empower women since the 1800s when this specific chapter opened. A lot of great programs there. You get to find out about them right now on Around, Around the, the Valley. Valley. Come with us. Do, do, do. YWC. Oh. No. No. WGRC's Around the Valley with Dave and Stephanie is sponsored by Zook Septic Services, serving Central Pennsylvania. Contact them for inspections, repairs, and system maintenance needs at 570-837-1466 or at zookseptic.com. Well, we have arrived here at the YWCA of North Central PA in Williamsport. And Stephanie, what a great building that we are in front of looking to find out what takes place here for the community. Yeah, this building is from 1928 and so much history has gone into it and we're excited to get to learn a little bit more about the history of the YWCA. Come along with us. I'll get this for you. Oh, thank you. This must be the place. I think we found it. Hey, how are y'all doing? Hey. Hi. 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 Hello. Hello. I'm Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. I'm Dawn. Dawn. Dave. Dave. Nice Hi, to meet you. you. I'm the boutique manager. Welcome to the boutique. Thank you. Thank nice you. to wow. meet you. Thank you guys so much for having us here. Um, the YWCA on January 17th celebrated its 128th anniversary of serving Lycoming County residents. And while over the years, um, kind of um, what we did, how we serviced the community changed somewhat, um, we've never faltered from wanting to ensure that we were empowering women um, and providing safe haven and protection for women and children. Um, so today, um, we have a program that serves domestic violence and sexual assault um, victims. Um, that program now is 43 years old. Um, and then our other program is known as Liberty House. That's our program for homeless. Um, so homeless women or homeless women with children. Um, and that program is currently in a 17th um, year. Um, approximately almost 15 years ago, um, the board of directors, um, along with the current CEO back then, Diane Glenright, we're looking for additional revenue sources in order to expand programming and making sure that we were serving um, the domestic violence sexual assault program known as Wise Options or the Liberty House program in the fullest capacity that we could and thus um, gave birth to the boutique where you're standing today. I love the boutique, I love working here because Everything we make here at the store um, goes up to help our shelters here at the YWCA, helping women in need. 100% of what we make. We're a high-end thrift store. I always call us high-end because what you get here is better than any other thrift store in town. All name brands, no stains, holes, rips, smells, any of that junk. It's all high quality, beautiful stuff. Mm -hmm. Plus, on top of our thrift store that is open to the public, we have lots of cool events like Cinderella's Closet, which Stephanie has helped with before. <laughs> so Cinderella's Closet helps students in need who couldn't afford otherwise to go to prom be able to afford their prom gown. We sell gowns for $10 to $15 a piece. Cinderella's Closet's coming up in just a couple months. Yes, it starts in March and runs all the way through May. So if you've ever seen the show Say Yes to the Dress, it's essentially that, but for prom. <laughs> it's great. So a student can connect, make an appointment, mm -hmm. come in, and then they get assigned a person yes. that gives them a Cinderella kind of experience. Correct. So that they, they get a volunteer fairy godmother, we call them. Mm -hmm. It's really great and they lead them through the whole process so there's no stress, no worrying, no sorting through the gowns themselves. Mm -hmm. Somebody leads them through the whole thing, helps them try them on, pick them out, and we really try and build these girls' spirits up. We've had some really tough stories. Um, for example, there was a young girl whose mother had passed away the year before and she was feeling just so sad, not only about not having her mom there, um, she gained weight because of the stress and she was just feeling so awful about herself, but she came in and with the help of her fairy godmother, she found the perfect, perfect dress and she left here smiling and bouncing and laughing and happy 
and it's stories like that that really make my job worth it. <laughs> and that goes along with what is the YWCA about empowering women? Exactly. Our mission statement is about empowering women, ending racism, basically all the good stuff you want in your community, we do it. It's a good place to be. What are the communities that you serve? So really, we serve anyone who comes to us. We serve like Humming County mostly, but we do get people from outside of. Um, for example, even with Cinderella's Closet, we got a dress donated from Philadelphia last wow. year. Wow. And we get girls from all over. Same for our shelters upstairs. We work with every other shelter or system you can really think of to help each other out. It's all a team effort. Okay. How can other people have a hand in creating those stories as far as donating items yeah. to the closet or to the boutique? Or to, to the boutique itself. Um, there's another great story about the boutique. Um, somebody donated a maternity coat last year, I believe it was, and we've never had a maternity coat before. One and only one we've ever had. And then we had a young lady come into our shelters with nothing but the clothes on her back. She had nothing. And she was able to get a maternity coat. She was pregnant. The only one we've ever had, the only one we've ever needed for a client, she got it. And it's stories like that are made possible through our donors. So everything here and everything in Cinderella's Closet is donated from our community. All we ask is that you drop it off here at the boutique during regular business hours. So nine to five, Monday through Friday and 10 to two Saturday. Um, you can drop it off here in the boutique or at the front desk and we'll take care of it. That's all it takes. Now there is a, another program called Creations of Courage yes, that happens of Courage. here. So tell us what, what exactly is that? So Creations of Courage is my new project this year. It's been here for, I think, about 15 years. It's been here for a while, um, but I took over this year as the manager of it. Um, it's a series of handbags made here on site by volunteers out of recycled materials. So we're also expanding into home goods. We just created these gorgeous new little wine bottle holders out of men's shirt sleeves coolest thing. <laughs> we do handbags, we do aprons, we do car key holders, we do it all. And that kind of stuff is made by four volunteers here on site who have started the project and kept it running. They're incredible seamstresses. One of them worked at Disney World doing costumes for a long time, like really talented ladies. And we sell them here at the boutique as well as in Rust and Shine and Patinas here in Williamsport. And just like everything else, 100% of what we make for those funds our shelters, Liberty House and Wise Auction. The cool thing about our ladies in the shelters is if they come in, like I said, with nothing but the clothes on their back, which ha unfortunately happens a lot, they are able to get their clothing for free from the boutique, anything they need. They just talk to their case manager, case manager comes down and has a big old shopping day uh -huh. with them. They get to pick whatever they need. Uh -huh. Same thing if they get a job interview or some big life exciting announcement they mm -hmm. get to come down and get what they need and get a little celebration and what a great way to again the word empowerment help yeah. them feel empowered but also give them like a sense of normalcy correct which is i'm sure something very much that is needed exactly it's tough if you can just imagine not only being homeless out of nowhere suffering the trauma of abuse that they may be going through having your kids with you and trying to explain to them Oh, Christmas might not happen this year because we have nothing but the clothes on our back. Or just any of that, to come in here with nothing and then be surrounded by people you don't know. It's it's emotional and it's tough. I'm a little choked up. But it's it makes what we do even more powerful. We've become one of the most reliable sources of funding for the Y. So Anything you do to help us helps a million people in return. Well, I really like this coat. Yes. Uh, great for winter, yes. but with an, a formal event coming up. Yeah. There are dresses. Yes, there are. Dresses. I like sparkly things. There are lots of dresses. And I want to. I want to go see the sparkly dresses. Can we go see them? Absolutely. Let's okay, go. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are up here taking a look at uh, some of the different projects of the YWCA. We talked about Cinderella's Closet where people can come and, and pick out prom dresses and we lost Stephanie somewhere. Stephanie! Hey Dave! I found some pretty sparkly things. I yes. really like them. You realize we're recording, right? We're filming a show. But I found pretty sparkly things! That's what I told Kaylee I was looking for and I found them. Any, any particular one? all of them but especially well i love i love teal it's one of my favorite colors so i really like these right here all right yeah well there you go stephanie has found her prom dress thanks to cinderella's closet well we are now in the park room here at the ywca in williamsport and dawn we've heard about a lot of the programs that are presented out of this building reaching out to those folks in need 
share with us how much of a need is it in this area with either homelessness, uh, women or children finding themselves on the street, not being able to provide. Uh, who are these services reaching here in Lycoming County? Through the Wise Options Program, which again is our domestic violence sexual assault program, um, unfortunately in a COVID world um, has um, really escalated those um, circumstances with domestic violence and sexual assault across the nation, I mean, it's also on the rise. I mean, you see reports where domestic violence is on the increase of 30 to 40 percent. And unfortunately, that has trickled back here to Lycoming County. Um, <clears throat> we have um, all sorts of um, services under our domestic violence sexual assault um, programming. Some of that is um, prevention ed. So we have a team of individuals that go out in the community to do all kinds of um, educational, whether it's to the, the little kids with safe touch, up to safe teen dating, um, all the way up to um, out in the community, you name it, um, we're there. And our fiscal year ending June 30th, 2021, um, saw us um, doing prevention education, even in a COVID world, doing it whether you're doing it virtually or from a safe distance perspective, um, in the neighborhood of 17 individuals that we touched in that um, one year period ending June 30th, um, 2021. We also have something called Safe Custody Exchange. Um, that's where um, individuals um, needing to, um, that share, let me back up, that share um, custody um, of um, minors and um, they need a safe place in which to exchange um, um, those um, visits. Um, last year, again, ending June 30th, we did almost 200 um, safe custody wow. exchanges um, here in Lycoming County. Our legal advocate team, which helps individuals with protection from abuse orders, or answering specific questions when they have been um, unfortunate caught in a domestic violence situation. There were over 550 um, individuals that our team served. And we are on track this year um, to surpass that number. Um, so the need is um, really great um, here in Lycoming County. The same way on the homeless side, our Liberty House program, um, last year, again, ending June 30th, 2021, um, we served 82 um, individuals in our homeless program. Um, that's adults and or adults with children. Um, that program is specifically for women and women with children. I would mention on our domestic violence sexual assault side, um, we serve men, women, and children. We also have two huts in the community. Um, we call them Huts of Hope. Um, there's one located right outside the YWCA here on 4th Street, and then there's another one that's located down in the Hepburn Plaza. Um, these huts are specifically for hygiene products for those that are just homeless within the community or those that are in need of a hygiene product. So you can donate directly to the YW, we can put it in the hut, or you can stop by and donate your own item um, in there. Um, so it's it's just, you know, um, take what you need, give what you can, um, kind of philosophy and um, process with uh, Hut of Hope. Well, this has been a great opportunity for us to find out about the work of the YWCA as you all meet the needs, Kaylee, Dawn. Uh, thank you so much for just making us aware of what all actually takes place here. I know as someone who has been a shopper at the boutique in the past, I learned so much more today just about all the services and the people literally, like you said, that you just get to touch and these little differences that you make in someone's life. So thank you so much for inviting us and letting us do this. It's amazing what one little article of clothing can really change in the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, well we, we, I want to say thank you. Thank you. I know yeah. um, I've sort of mentioned it previously, but I want to thank you for coming and learning a little bit more about us. Behind Kelly and I is a team of almost 30 others um, that are in the trenches day in and day out. And they're really, um, in my mind, the heroes um, that um, are really helping to transform lives. And we get to be a part of it. And we get to see it um, happen. Um, but they're the ones that are really making the work. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is a good time to wrap up Around the Valley. 
I think I would be in trouble with my wife if I didn't go shopping in the boutique. <laughs> so I need to go. I need to go do my part to uh, support the cause. But we certainly appreciate you watching around the valley, Stephanie. And I always have a lot of fun, and we are always looking for suggestions. Yes, if you have an idea for a future around the valley, a place that we can get a behind-the-scenes look at or learn more about your place, let us know. Email morningshow at wgrc.com. And who knows? Next time we just may see you around, around the valley. All right, are you running any specials? <laughs> <laughs>